to go. Hey guys, welcome back. And for you new people out there, don't forget to subscribe. It's Christmas and we appreciate it. Um, today we're going to work on this little chainsaw. I picked it up pretty cheap a couple of days ago. And the gentleman says it'll start, and his wife said it'll start. But I haven't heard it even rumble a little bit yet. So, let's get started. It's a good looking chainsaw. Can't say anything bad about that. So oh, let's primer up a little. I just put some fresh fuel in it. I can feel the primer bulb nice and full. Okay, choke seems to work correctly. Let's give her a run. Okay, let's carry her over to the bench and see what's going on. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is pull the lid off. Let's pull the lid off, and I suppose we'll pull the gas out of her and put a little bit of starter fluid in it and see what happens. Now when I do this, I always, always, always drain the gas before I put the starter fluid in it for an, un for an unknown motor. And the reason I do that is if the motor is flooding, starter fluid won't help us any. See, it's got good looking gas in it. That's because I just put it in. Okay, let's put that off to the side. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, first thing we'll do is check spark. Use a little spark tool for that. It's a really handy tool and it's less than ten dollars. You could do it the old world way and uh, hold the spark plug against the side of the engine. But it's kind of hard to pull the plug, to hold the plug and to pull the cord at the same time. See? Spark plug looks good. It's not fouled out terribly. It's got a good color to it. Whoops, we're not worried about that. Now we're just checking for spark now, so I'm not worried about the plug being terribly tight. Okay, I saw a little bit of orange here, so that tells me I've got a spark. So with that, let's move on to the next thing. And this is what pretty much everybody would do that works on little engines. When one won't start, you've got two or three things you check every time. First one is you check the fuel, make sure it's got good fuel. Second thing is see if you've got spark. Now if a motor won't start, the spark plug is almost never the problem. Motor runs badly, it could be a spark plug. But if it won't start at all, nah, it's probably something in the carburetor. Let's see what we've got here. So most chainsaws have a little bar. 
runs back to here to get the throttle. If you don't see that little bar, that means you've got a cable. And in this case, the cable should be right here. Let me get you in close. Hang on, elevator drop. You see this right here? That's our accelerator cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab it. Oh, I think I tangled it when I pulled this off. I did. Not a problem. I use a screwdriver to do this so you can see it. See, we're pulling it back. We're accelerating the engine as hard as we can. And that pops right off. And now it's loose. Now we can take the air cleaner off. And, oh, good Lord. Looks like somebody's played with this carburetor more than a little bit. I don't know quite what that is, but I do know it didn't come stock that way. Let's go ahead and pull the fuel lines. And remember, before you pull the fuel line off, make sure you loosen the gas cap or, or fuel will go backwards up, up the line to you. Okay, let's see what we've got here. You guys come on back up. That way I can get you out of my way. There we go. Okay. That's a mess. I think I've actually got my carburetors here someplace. No, I don't. I've got a backing plate. And I've got a carburetor. See, this one doesn't have the right plate on it. I can put this plate on it and use this one. And we'll rebuild this for another day. Now the reason we're taking this plate off, instead of just simply using this one, is when you've got this little bar on it, and the original one has this, this little bar will hit the insulator for the carburetor. And that's not good. And as they say in the Hollywood horror movies, perfect. So whenever you buy a new carburetor for a chainsaw, if yours has this little bar activating it, but your old one has this lever, pull this plate off and switch it. We would have done it with the one off the old carburetor, but we really couldn't because it had been all glued together and whatnot, and there's no saying that they glued it together at the right angle. Yeah, these two barrel carburetors are just about all the same. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, and there we go. Let's get this together and see how she runs. Let's test the choke. Well, a little overkill, but choke looks good. And it operates the mechanism correctly. That's what we need to see. Let's put our screwdrivers away and get the star back. The chainsaw is the star of the show. Okay, our gasket looks good here. Our gasket looks mediocre there. Let's find a new gasket for it.
Chainsaws can be pretty fiddly to work on. You won't see a whole lot of videos on people working on chainsaws. Mostly because chainsaws can make you look stupid. Let's put that there. Okay, we're going to grab our little air manifold off the other carburetor. There we go. Everything fits in place nicely. So before we put the rest together, this fuel line looks a little bit long, but they might have made it a little bit long because it was hard to put on. Because they didn't have some long pliers like these. There's one fuel line. Now for the return line. Where are you at, buddy? Okay, everything's in place. Now the next thing we're going to do is put the choke on. We need to do that before we put the air cleaner on because there's a retainer on the air cleaner that prevents this from going on easily. And that appears to work okay. And then we'll wrap this around and put our throttle cable back on just like she was. We're catching on something and I don't see it. Oh, I got it. That's it, under the carburetor. And there we have it. Now that's back on. Nah, but we lost our choke lever. Let's do a choke lever back on. Put our air cleaner in place. And remember, when you take something like this apart, I know I say it a lot, but for God's sake, take a lot of pictures when you take it apart. And you can see the lever is operating our top barrel correctly. If we pull our choke out, it's releasing correctly. So we're happy with that. And one thing I noticed before is this gas cap has the original O-ring on it. I'm probably just going to put a whole new gas cap on. And that should take care of that. Okay, everything appears to work well. So let's take it down to the floor. Well, no, I take that back. Let's put a little gas in it first. Then we'll take it down to the floor. That looks like the right gas cap for this bad boy. Fits like a charm. Put a little gas in her and we'll put her on the floor, make sure she's not leaking. I'm not worried too much because yesterday was my birthday. And my wife likes our house. So she gave me a fire extinguisher as one of my birthday presents. And a lot of people say, you know, if, they, if she gave you a fire extinguisher, that means she doesn't have faith in you. She gave me a fire extinguisher because she has complete faith in me. She knows I can be dangerous. Okay. Let's put her back on the floor and see what happens. First, we'll pump her up real good. We got a new carburetor, which means we've got an empty carburetor. Full 
choke. Yeah, it sounds like she might be tuned a little bit. more than idle, but that's okay. So let's go over and tune her. Now the hardest part of tuning one of these little two-stroke motors is getting it started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the idle up quite a bit. When she's idling kind of high, then after we get a little bit closer with this, with the low side, we'll back the idle back out a little bit at a time. And we're going to have to take care because the chain's going to try to move when she's idling high. So you've got to be extremely careful. Next, we're going to do before we even start is establish which screwdriver we need to do it. That's not a spline. So oh, where's the pack map? No, 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 pack map. It's usually the spline or the pack map. Oh, it is the spline. It's just moving very freely. Oh, that's moving a lot smoother than I'm used to. The carburetor feels pretty good. And the low side is turned, holy cow, low side was turned out a mile on this. I don't know what this was on originally, but we're going to turn it a turn and a half and start there. Now we're going to try to start it. We're going to be ready to turn the idle down. And keep in mind if things go wrong, shut her off. Sometimes that'll stay there, usually it won't. We choked her down just a little too much. Didn't give it enough gas. She's still off someplace. Let's turn the idle back up and adjust the carburetor one more time. Just turn it up half a turn.
Okay, she sounds pretty good now. So we're going to call her finished. We'd already checked the plug. Make sure we don't see any leaks or anything inside. I hope she looks pretty good. That'll make somebody a nice little chainsaw. Air filter is meh. Let's see what we've got. Does that match? I think that matches. These air filters are pretty much all the same. See what I was saying before? Is if you'd had the little steep, if you'd have the little, let me pull you around here. If we were carrying the backing plate that required this little steel bar, and this is the backing plate here. It's actually on the front side of the carburetor. But if it were here, it would be hitting right here. And you'll see people do this, and they'll try to cut this and change things around when it's not necessary. All you need to do is change out the backing plate for one that doesn't require that bar. Finding that carburetor can be hard sometimes. Reusing one of the parts off your original carburetor doesn't hurt a thing. Unless, of course, you're in the boat this one was in. The original parts weren't worth owning. But she's pretty happy now, and that's what I care about. Let's get her lid nice and tight, and let's put her for sale. Okay, now that we've got the lid on, let's start it one more time. You see when we pull the choke, it automatically turns the engine on. That means the linkage is working correctly. I accidentally choked it when I didn't have. Thing definitely sounds like it's ready to run. Well, that one went pretty nice. Now, sometimes when you buy a carburetor for one of these chainsaws, you'll find that you'll have the wire that runs between it rather than that little black lever. And what you want to do is use this part off your old carburetor, the, the throttle body for the second barrel. That way, you can get away with just tripping this instead of using that little wire, and it works fine. I didn't change anything on the carburetor except for the throttle body itself, and I removed the wire from the equation. And as you can see, this one works perfectly good, and it just likes being wide open. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.